you were live. It's the rant. It's time. Sunday night. It's time. Uh, Look at Christmas. us all dressed up. One week and a day away. Yes. So who's Festive. getting the early Christmas presents? The New England Patriots. Gosh. Yeah, they need them too. Yeah. Patriots need them. Uh, we uh, went to Panera Bread with Stanton after the Rayma Lights. Yeah. And he was out of his mind, and I'm just now noticing that he spilled. Uh, on you. Yeah, spilled lots of stuff. Anyway, that's, that's what you get on Facebook Live, I guess. Me, uh, <laughs> me cleaning my pants before before we get started on the rant. Yeah. Caden McFarland alongside Big Al Jerkins. Welcome. Glad you're there. Uh, so here's what we've got on the docket. Show's going to start shortly. Uh, you're probably watching the Cowboys and Raiders right now. Cowboys leading 10 nothing, but the Raiders are driving in the final minute of the half. Um, as Al mentioned, that Patriots-Steelers game, probably the biggest game in the NFL. I mean, they have defeated New England. The They're going to have a game in hand and the tiebreaker, right. which basically would end it. And the NFL says no catch. We've seen this how many times now in the last few years where things had just – your entire life playing football, in the backyard, wherever, high school, it's a catch. But the way the NFL adjudicates this, I suppose. Pressure. Well, uh, I just uh, don't. I don't you understand. It's going back a long time. Well, of course, because they make this game too hard to officiate. Yeah. And this call is too subjective. And again, balls are going to look when you slow mo, mo uh, slow mo it. The ball's going to look like it's going to be different in someone's hand. You could not tell whether the ball hit the ground and, or not. Or even, but he right. had possession anyway. Cross the goal line. And I would have thought, even if he did lose it, they would have ruled it a catch. He fumbled, recovered his own fumble. Yeah. And, you know, this is, when you put in a rule, you have certain kinds of plays in mind. I don't think they had this kind of play in mind. Typically, when this becomes an issue, it's because a guy has left his feet, usually falling back. He's trying to make a catch and secure it. And so I understand why, the, you know, yeah, you got to determine what's a catch, what's a not. How much bobble can there be? But usually it is when a guy is falling and what we're worried about is, does he really have the ball as his body is being jarred against, you know, the turf? This was different. He caught it. He was running with it. He was reaching for the end zone like we see so many people do. If he was a running back going into the end zone, play would have been dead. It would have been over. As soon as he crossed the plane, touchdown. But because he's a receiver... And I suppose the catch was in the process of being completed, though, to me. Had it, had taken steps, established he had it, reached for the right. goal line, and then in the process of reaching, slipped a little bit out of one of his hands, and you saw it move some as it was going to the turf. And so, I, I mean, it's something oh. that's a complete catch at what? every level as you're growing up, now in the NFL with instant replay, suddenly that's an incomplete catch, and the Patriots are going to have home field. Why is it fans. still on the books? Why is it still on the books? Right. We Simplify the rule book. When Des Bryant, Des Bryant and the Packers, just I said, if stop. that is not a catch, change your rule, oh. NFL. It's, change it. It is, and the NBA has some goofy rules, okay? The traveling thing and the European step. Yeah, I mean, and all, is please, that even give me, a rule? I don't even know break. if that is a rule. Okay, well, it's not. Oh, or, uh, you know, you call a timeout in the last two minutes and you get the ball. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that, that, those yeah. are a little ridiculous. That for a while. But this is the stupidest rule in sports. The I hate dumbest it. rule I hate it in more sports. Than any other that I can think of, yeah. uh, you know, the game is already getting more difficult. This game we, we were watching here with Oakland and Dallas, every other play was a flag. Yeah, I know. Every other play is a flag. Uh, come on. And this is the 14th week of the season? Yeah. I, look. I don't, one, that's kind of a separate issue. I mean, we were talking about the, the throw to the end zone to Des right. Bryant. Ooh, touchdown Raiders with 10 oh, seconds. No, but there's a flag. I think it'll be on defense. Oh, well, well you uh, never know. I think Oakland has just cut Dallas's lead to 10-7. Dallas needs this nope. game. But, nope. oh, Dallas nope. is saying the other way. We'll see. Um, but you're right. This catch rule is the one that bothers me more than any other right now. Yeah, it, it, it gets your blood curdling, and it, and it yeah. takes – 
And it was the, the call was basically invented because of instant replay. Yeah. You're, no, you're exactly right. This was The not reason we have this rule yep. is because they can determine it with instant replay, right. and I still don't think they determine it properly half the time. Yeah. New England no, won a game right. like this earlier in the season. Same kind of thing. Uh, screwed the Jets. When, when are Bill Belichick and Tom Brady going to catch a break? You know what I mean? When are those guys? I mean, they make their own luck. God bless right. them. I mean, I they're know. the best. Oh, but, but, you know, the, the league hates them because of the deflate gate. Yeah. You know, that, that sure. Uh, they get every call in the book exactly. all the time. They got they got the tuck rule call against the Raiders a hundred years ago. Tuck rule. Yeah, oh, it, every, I watched that uh, the, the documentary or whatever on the tuck rule, the NFL Films thing, uh, just very recently. And oh my gosh, that'll make you want to throw up. In did your they mouth call that touchdown back? That. No, yeah, that was on the Raiders. The Cowboys were right. So we're down to uh, I don't know. Car may uh, have one play left after this. How about that? The rant is going to start at, oh, not that early. 10 till 9. Still better than usual, Bob. Yes. Merry Christmas to us. Thank you, sir. Hey, also on the docket today, we're going to be talking about Trey Young. What a start to this kid's college career. Yesterday, Jay Williams, former great Duke player, called him the best player in the entire country and compared him to Steph Curry. Hard to argue with at the moment. Uh, they beat Wichita State, third-ranked Wichita State yesterday, and really controlled the ball game. We're up, you know, comfortably uh, for almost the entire game. And Oklahoma State beats undefeated and 19th-ranked Florida State. I, we had a fantastic college football season with OU and OSU. We didn't have a single Saturday where both beat top 25 teams like That's they true. did yesterday very, in college. Very good. Too. So, very I mean, good. how the heck about that? It looks like we got a couple of good college basketball teams. TU and ORU also winners yesterday. But anyway, we're going to talk about Trey Young. We're going to talk Trey Young and Baker Mayfield versus Sam Bradford and Blake Griffin. Which which of those do? What combo like was the most dynamic? Which which combo do you like? Which we'll also duo talk was about the- OSU Mitchell Solomon, the Bixby native, came up huge in that ball game yesterday. Um, Hey, tribute to that kid. How, how many years has Solomon played at OSU? It seems like, it seems, very long time, it seems like he's been there half of my career. It's halftime. The rant's going to start right All now. Right. Did they get the three points? They did not. They did they not. Did. Welcome into the rant, everybody. You want something to rant about? It's no better than this. Steelers and the Patriots today. Yeah, the NFL catch rule is a joke. Jesse James reaching for the end zone and the win. And they say that's not a catch. Your entire life growing up playing football in the schoolyard, middle school, high school, that's a catch, that's a touchdown. And as you said, because of instant replay, now what used to be a catch isn't necessarily a catch. And the Steelers lose to the Patriots in the biggest game of the NFL season this year. Likely losing home field advantage throughout the AFC playoffs. I like that. You put that in there. NFL catch rule is a joke. And I, I totally agree. <laughs> Uh, and it shouldn't be. I, I just can't believe that the owners can't get together and simplify this rule. They, they, they simplify every rule in favor of offense in every other play. Why not? You catch the ball, you take a step. There you it's go. a catch. Thank period. you. How Thank tough you. can that be? Even, absolutely. Or even a step and a half or two steps. What, I mean, if you want to make it a little bit more, but I mean, yes, I don't, I don't know what's a catch. I don't know what's it's not a catch. It, there's, Absolutely. Um, it, this, one, this one drives me nuts, though. And I understand that by the letter of the law, they did the right thing. Like, I, I get that. I'm not but the rule shouldn't they, be on the books in the exactly first place. That's exactly right. It, they need to change and, uh, the way they officiate. Do they like the that controversy it provides? Do they, right. do they enjoy the controversy it provides? No, uh, I don't think so. I think they don't know. Look, it is difficult, and I, I said this earlier on Facebook Live. When they instituted the rule, what is a catch versus not a catch, they didn't have this kind of play in mind, I'm convinced. They had the kind of play where you're throwing a fade to the end zone in the corner and a guy's falling right, back the ice and his ball. body's going to hit the turf. And the question is, as his body hits the turf, does he control the ball? Is there bo- You know what I mean? Sure. Does he ha- really, really have it? And so they've tinkered with it some and what they've got on the books. Now. But that's the kind of play they had in mind, not this where a guy catches it and takes a step or maybe two as we watch it again, re- reaches for the end zone, clearly has it, crosses the plane, as we mentioned, if he was a running back crossing the plane like that, game over. Right. Touchdown, Steelers beat the Patriots. But because he's a wide receiver, 
I guess he has to take it all the way to the ground, which just, it drives me nuts. We've seen other instances. Des Bryant, probably the most famous, three years ago, I think, in the playoffs against the Packers, where he caught it and took a couple of steps, and he's reaching now with one hand, you know, reaching for the pylon and loses it there. But, I mean, that's a catch and a fumble. I know it. It's I, a catch. So was that. So was yes. this play. Thank you. Um, it's... And it's not just because the Patriots benefit that I'm outraged. I hate this rule, and I know you do too. I've always, I could never understand. Even his knees are down there with, with yeah. the catch. Um, just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. But just, yeah, you're, like you say, New England needs more breaks. Yeah, that's right. So, they don't uh, get enough. Yeah, so congratulations to your uh, 2018 Super Bowl champion, uh, New England Patriots. It's happening again. <laughs> Our long national nightmare. Uh, continues yes. anyway we'll, we'll move on to the local stuff because we got we got a lot of great stuff to talk about welcome to the rant Caden McFarland big Al Jerkins how about this guy Trey Young OU beating third ranked Wichita State yesterday 91 83 took the lead for good about five minutes into the ball game led pretty comfortably the final 35 minutes he had 29 points and that's his average leading the leading the country in scoring 29 points a game also averaging nine assists per game, had 10 yesterday. This is a wonderful, wonderful player. I mean, We're watching him, him now, watch it. I mean, we saw him in high school, but what he's done at this level so far, has it taken I, you back a little bit that he's been this good this fast? Uh, I'm, I'm amazed. In fact, we had a chance to talk to Coach Kruger on the radio last Friday about him and this game, and even Coach Kruger is extremely, obviously satisfied, yeah. but didn't think that he'd develop this quickly. Um, he, now, they now run the everything next, through him, and right. the, the rest uh, of his team what, is I, happy about it. I mean, that's how good he is. They've deferred. Guys right. who, who played I, big roles last year and even two, three years ago. I can see ago. the comparisons to Steph Curry, just Absolutely. the way he plays. Look, I don't, I don't think he's quite as pure a shooter as Steph. He is a fabulous shooter. Trey Young is a freshman. fantastic shooter. You're right, only a freshman. But when I watch it, first of all, I think he's better than Steph Curry was at this age. At, at Davidson as a freshman, I think, I think Trey Young's further ahead. That's not saying he's going to be better than Steph Curry, just saying developmentally at this point. And by the way, he's been able to borrow from Steph Curry where Curry was creating some things on his own. We, right. we kind of had this back in the day with Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan. Kobe got to see everything Michael did and kind of steal his Storm, tricks at an yeah. earlier age. So maybe he was advanced in that way, but it's not like he eclipsed Michael. Right. So anyway, I think Trey has definitely patterned his game after Steph Curry in a lot of ways. Uh, learn from him, but I, I think he's got better speed. And I know that Steph can really go, but the way this kid gets down the floor, that's one of the things, even more than his shooting, the thing that stands out to me when I watch him play is how in control he is at such a high speed. Defenses, I mean, Wichita State plays tremendous defense. There's no stopping this kid on the fast break. Does and he need to perfect his release though? Because it is a little low. It, but so is Steph. I used to think so. I mean, once upon a time, that was discouraged. See, but guys have lower releases now, I think, because you can get it off faster. If it works for you, it works for right. you. And, and he's a kid, you know, I mean, it's working for him. Uh, but, look, I thought he was going to shoot about the way he does at this level. I thought he'd come in and be a guy who could fill it up the way he has. He's a whole lot better going to the rim and finishing than I expected. As skinny as he is, right. really, really impressive. Uh, so, look, at, go ahead. No, I was going to say, so uh, we're – are we going to get to see him play past this year? I, I can't imagine at this point. I mean, I thought coming in that he was probably a guy who would stay for two years because he is so skinny. He's so good right now. Jay Williams, by the way, former uh, fantastic Duke, Duke uh, player, won a national championship for them, analyst for ESPN, mentioned that he's a lot like Steph Curry and says he's the best player in the country right now. I mean, to me, the way he's playing, he's a high draft pick, and, and he's, he's going to be gone because of that. So enjoy him now big 12 season starts in in two weeks i look this kid's special right love watching these highlights so my question is how many years ago was that almost a decade ago nine years ago we had a heisman trophy winner in sam bradford and the wooden award winner the college basketball player of the year in blake griffin at ou it at the same time and they were both the number one kid in the pro drafts the next year sam and blake is Baker Mayfield Trey Young? Baker's already got his Heisman. In some ways, well, I think more accomplished than Sam Bradford. Mayfield will not be the overall number one. Yes, that's right. That that's right. Be. I don't. But, that, that that won't be duplicated. Uh, but would you maybe take this duo over over that one? Is it just a better duo? I think. Too early. From well, from O from OU's standpoint, 
I think Mayfield has brought more to the OU table than Sam Bradford. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think you got to put the check in, I, in Mayfield's. Now, if young Griffin did give OU three years. Two. Two years, I'm sorry. Yep, took him to an Elite Eight. Um, so I think the jury's still out on that. Yeah. But if young can do what Buddy Heald did two years ago yeah. as yeah, a freshman, or what Griffin has done yeah. or did, um, yeah, I, I think uh, I think you can make the yeah. the comparison. It's say, so it's only December. Trey's only played what ten games. Right. So yes, the obvious answer is if you're talking body of work, you would still have to go Sam and Blake. But I think it's certainly in terms of who I like to watch. And Blake was fantastic to watch with the dunking. But who, who I like to watch, who's most entertaining for me? I'll take Baker and Trey Young okay. over Sam Bradford and Blake Griffin. And I think there's a really good chance that they could just be the better duo. Granted, this is all subjective, but like they could just be the better players. And I'm not well, necessarily talking pro career, but I'm saying what they what they were at the college level. And I, I gotcha. granted I gotcha. Blake two years versus Trey likely only one. I mean that changes the dynamic. But you know, Baker played almost a full year more than Sam did uh, as sooner starting quarterback. And I mean it, you said Mildren is who you would take as far as OU's greatest if, quarterback ever. If you would put, but I think Baker has quickly become almost a okay. consensus pick. Just, just imagine though, Mildren in this offense. Well, yeah, he the could throw the ball. I've seen today. the highlights of that game of the century. He could throw. Well, he threw a lot that day. Well, he was, he was. I mean, they got him because he could throw the football when he was a high school kid in Texas. And he could obviously run and, the. And uh, he the had to change. Well. Right, he had to change his his. Yeah, he's a ball player. Entire offense. A ball player. I would have loved to have seen Mildred play in this offense. I really would. I think he, he would dominate. He he would have won two Heisman's. Can I tell you something, folks? There's not a show out there. A lot of people do Sunday night sports shows. There's not a show out there that's going to show you Trey Young video, but then talk about Jack, Jack Mildred. That, that, that's that's just not happening. We're anywhere killing else. two birds with one stone. See, <laughs> that's, that. that's right. Hey, we had a heck of a college football season with OU and OC. It's still going on. Uh, but it looks like we're going to have a better college basketball season than we expected. OSU with a top 25 or a victory over a top 25 team yesterday, beating 19th ranked Florida State coach by Leonard Hamilton, Leonard. former OSU head coach Leonard Hamilton. And he's been at Florida State for a long time. Long time. He's got a good team. They were undefeated coming into this ball game. They led most of the way. But OSU just kept scratching and clawing. Jeffrey Carroll in the starting lineup for the first time. He scored 23. He was really good. But at the end, Bixby native Mitchell Solomon that? made the two biggest plays. Uh, the tip in with about five seconds left to give OSU a one-point lead. And then he took a charge at the other end to preserve the victory. Mitchell Solomon, when he's he was averaging he's one point years per game as a freshman. But he's been at OSU for 12 years. When he was uh, averaging I'm not, one I'm not knocking point his academic, game as a freshman. I'm not knocking his academic stand. I'm, not saying, he's, masters I'm not saying he's John Belushi of Animal House. That's not <laughs> what I'm inferring. Look, I just, it just seems like he's been playing on He this hasn't team even forever. been there as long as you think. But he's played for three different head coaches. <laughs> <laughs> um, and one of his biggest wins, well, I don't know. They had a nice season last year. They had some nice Big 12 wins. But uh, this was a really, really nice one, and he played a fantastic role, and that's a kid you're happy for because yeah, well, yeah. he has stuck it out, had a great attitude and mentality. And, look, it was difficult for him early on, especially on the offensive end. And you sometimes see kids lose confidence, um, and then body language changes as well, and he's a guy who never did that. Just continued to go after rebounds and play defense and be a team guy, and I think he's going to have a really Rectum fantastic window. year. I mean, I, I think he had 12 points, 11 rebounds yesterday. Here we see him uh, celebrating the big moments late. Excited about Mitchell Solomon, the season he can have in his senior season, but then also Mike Boynton. Happy for this guy. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, I won't shy away from it. I think I said maybe publicly, if not publicly, certainly privately. You know, I didn't think he was going to be OSU's coach throughout the season. Just with the Lamont Evans thing, I thought, I thought they'd cut him loose. I thought this year would get ugly. I didn't think there was any way he would get the team to play at this level this early. He's got them to rally around, and they are playing hard every single that's night. The, they, I mean, they are playing the to the top. Yeah, absolutely. That's the key. They're I mean, he's doing hard. a fantastic job is the point. They, uh, so, of the two, what team, which team has been the biggest surprise? OSU or OU? OSU's been the biggest surprise for me. Okay. I, I thought with Trey Young coming in and some pieces last year that were, you know, I, I thought, oh, and Lon Kruger. OU was so bad last year. They were. 
They were, but they had some guys who could do some things, and they, you know, Doolittle's mm -hmm. gone, but McGusty was coming back, and Odom's and uh, Latin. Anyway, they, they had some guys who could do some things, and with Trey Young, I thought, hey, that could be a really good. I thought they were going to finish top half of the Big Twelve. Okay. OSU, there's no way I thought that this sort of start was possible. And look, we don't know what they're going to be in Big Twelve play yet. But they're better than I thought they were, and I think they've passed some teams, in my mind at least. You know, I don't know where people would slot them now. What were they picked ninth uh, yeah. preseason, Big 12? Um, I was surprised. Iowa State was picked in the lower ring, yeah, too. Yeah, that's right. They might have been 10th, in fact, or 8th. 10th or 8th, I can't remember exactly. But anyway, to me, Oklahoma State looks like a team that can buy for uh, – they could be middle of the pack without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Maybe even – look, I'm just going to say I know that this league is really, really good, and yesterday the league had a really, really good day. Um, but you see Kansas scuffling a little bit. Right. It, you know what I mean? Like, they're going to be tough to beat in Stillwater is my point. Like, I could see this team having a winning record and maybe inching up above, maybe even, you know, flirting with being a top-five team in the Big 12. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's very possible. Um, 